Nice. Good morning, guys. And um, yeah, we could have a bit of Johnny feedback. Thumbs up. Yeah. <clears throat> no. <clears throat> you can hear me, can't you? Yes. Oh, well done. Thank you, Johnny. Nice to see you all. Um, I'm going to... Um, oh, hold on. Sorry, guys. I'm going to shut the blind, apparently. It's too, too bright. Give me one second. <clears throat> I don't know if that's an improvement or not, but um, it's more about listening. Thank you, Mike. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to uh, pray for us in a second, and um, I'm going to um, share some things with us this morning. This is um, slightly um, a bit of a hybrid in a different kind of a way, because um, it's partly a message and uh, some things which... Um, I believe the Lord is highlighting for us and um, part of it um, is thoughts and practical things um, about moving forward together um, as a church. So it's a bit of a crossover. Um, I'm just going to pray, um, settle my own heart as much as anything else. Lord, we love to be yours and we love to find in every moment that we are aware of you and turn to you, and even when we're unaware, we find that we're in your hands. We find that we are safe and that we are undergirded by your magnificence and by your love and by your promises and your goodness. And, and our hearts focus this morning and our delight is so very much towards you. Lord, keep us in that place of eyes lifted high to yourself, Lord Jesus, this morning. As we, as we consider, as we listen, as we share, as we function together by your spirit, Lord, our hearts are towards you and we love you, Lord Jesus. We love your name and the sound of your name. We thank you for all that it represents for us this morning, all that you are and have brought us into. And we love you together, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm going to, um, I want to start really by giving us a bit of a, a, a backdrop thought. Um, so this is um, kind of connected to uh, what I want to emphasize. Um, but really, it's like a bit of a backdrop thought. And the Lord really brought this um, famous bit of scripture to my attention um, just in the last uh, few weeks. And it's from um, Luke chapter 14. And um, I'm going to read down um, a few verses. Uh, it's uh, probably well known to all of us here, I imagine. And um, I just want to read it for us. Um, highlight a couple of things. And it's like a backdrop thought to the other things that I want to try and get across for us this morning. And um, so here it is, Luke chapter 14, and it said, um, a man was giving a big dinner, a feast, and he invited many. And at the dinner hour, he sent his slave to say to those who had been invited, come, for everything is ready now. But they all alike began to make excuses. And the first one said to him, I bought a piece of land and I need to go out and look at it. Please um, consider me excused. And another one said, I bought five yoke of oxen and I'm going to try them out. Please consider me excused. And another one said, I have married a wife. And for that reason, I cannot come. And the servant came back and reported this to his master. And the head of the household became angry and said to his servant, go out at once into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in here the poor and crippled and blind and lame. And the slaves answered, Master, uh, what you commanded has been done and still there is room. And the master said to his servant, go out into the highways and along the hedges and compel them to come in so that my house may be filled. For I tell you, none of these men who were invited shall taste of my feast. And um, 
it's just uh, in this um, story, in this parable, um, there is just something which I just want to highlight real quickly for us, which is really um, showing something of the heart of God for us. Um, and there is this invitation to the feast. Um, and uh, the, the expected, if you like, oh, what's happened here? Um, the expected people um, weren't going to come um, for various reasons. Um, but the heart of the um, the man giving the feast was that the table would be full. It was prepared. It was laid. There was an invitation. Um, but they come to this moment where all those that had been invited were giving excuses and saying, I can't come for this reason and for that reason. Um, and in that moment, I'm thinking within this parable, this story, that must have been a real upset moment. It must have really upset the um, the thrust of what was going on. There was an expectation for certain things um, to have happened in terms of invitations and people coming and whatever. And there was a real upset. Um, but he continues on because his heart was for those um, many to gather and to celebrate this feast together. Um, but there was this real upset. And I just kind of give that out for us real quick at the beginning of these thoughts this morning, because still that heart of God continues that whenever there has been an upset, his heart is still to reach out, to send us out and to gather in those that will come. And sometimes you get to a place where you feel like um, we're talking about, I mean, they went initially into the city and into the streets of the city. And then after that, there's still room and they go out into the highways and the byways and they compel men and women to gather and to come in to the feast. And that is always God's heart to continue to reach out and from wherever men and women will come and will gather um, and will come and feast, um, he sends out um, his servants to gather them in. And so really that's a backdrop thought. Um, within that um, parable, there is what I referred to as this upset moment. And I think that it's true to say, I think we'd all agree um, to this, um, that within this last year that we've had together, um, there really has been an upset an upset moment. It's been true nationally, it's been true internationally, it's been true locally um, for us. But there has been, if I can put it like this, and um, people have heard this um, thought, this idea, but there's sometimes it's necessary for there to be an upset for things to be reset. Sometimes there needs to be a resetting of certain things, uh, maybe of tradition, maybe of approach, maybe of all kinds of things which God is aware of, and, think, and he allows or uses an upset to reset um, certain things um, for whether that is as a nation, whether that is um, a local church. But on the surface, there has been a great upset across the nation. So if I'm thinking about the church in this country, and we could think broader than that, but if we think about the church in this country, there has been a real upset um, in this last year with lockdown and COVID and everything that has been going on. And in churches across the country, attendance has fallen. This is statistically accurate. You can look at it. But attendance of churches has fallen. Practice of churches has changed. Our practice has had to change. Um, <clears throat> pastors have been broken during this time they found it really intense really difficult um, and it's been difficult for so many people um, in so many different ways and there's been a great upset but I want to highlight for us this morning that God I'm stating the obvious that God is still working within this context that we've been living through God is working and sometimes we see on the surface of things um, and we see the upset. But beyond that, behind that, underneath that, there is this working of God. And he, I believe, um, is resetting um, certain things. And there has been a resetting um, so that his church is with purpose, his purpose, um, that with this resetting so that his church will become stronger and more resilient going forward. 
I personally really believe that that is true, that part of the way that God is working things out during this season is that he will strengthen his church and that his church um, will become more resilient going forward. We have had our own upset. So this is really, this is kind of personal for us. This is real for us. We've had our own upset in this last year. Um, we've had, and again, whatever the reasons for all of this, but um, at the beginning of um, lockdown, obviously, um, elders and families um, left the church for different reasons. Um, practices changed in terms of how we needed to function um, as a local church. Obviously, we've been online um, mainly. Um, and then more recently, others have left and all sorts of upheaval things have happened that have caused in that way, as you look at it, upsets. Um, and God um, will be using or working, if I could put it like that, through this season um, to necessarily reset certain things for us as a local church. And so we have to ask the question, what is God saying now? What is God saying now? And how do we move forward? And um, I was really encouraged, actually, listening to um, Chris, who came and shared with us last week, and he highlighted a number of things. I encourage you, actually, to maybe re-listen um, to that message. There is real specifics in there, which the Lord is speaking to us. And one of those things um, he said towards the end of his message, he basically just said, stick with it stick with it it's not a very profound comment is it um but in a way it is um and it's certainly something that the lord's really brought to my attention over the last um little while and i used a different word and it was just this simple word continue church local church church in chester continue stick with it i really believe that this is one of the things which god is uh saying it's a really simple command but it carries such encouragement because when we know that, that God is speaking this, stick with it, guys, continue, keep moving forward, even out of these difficulties that we've been experiencing. And hopefully that is changing and things are opening up as a country and for the ways that we may be able to gather and to meet, those things are changing. But when God speaks this simple command to continue, to stick with it. It has encouragement because we know, because of this, that God still has purpose to fulfill. And Chris put that a different way, and he talked about um, the promises, the difference between the promises foretold um, and then the, I um, can't remember how he put it, but he was talking about coming into the fulfillment of those um, promises. Um, but we know if God commands, instructs, encourages us simply to continue as his gathered people, that there is purpose um, from him in the doing of that. There is a reset, but it is for strength. It is for continuation. And I believe it's also for harvest. It is for our strengthening. It is for our continuing, our resilience. And it is for his harvest is that also that he will be gathering in other people um, to his church. Um, there's quite there's a few things that I want to mention as we go along, and I'm just going to keep moving because I don't want to take over long. This morning we're going to be um, having a picnic later, but I'm just going to keep moving. Um, so when we think about continuing, if we receive that word from the Lord to our hearts, church continue um or as chris said stick with it um and it's just this encouragement and then you have to think well okay that's good how do we continue and so i want to highlight for us two different aspects to me they're both equally important but they're different um and so when we think about how do we continue we have to think about both the principle and the practice there is the practice, the practicalities, the, the outworking, and there's also the principles of God, which um, kind of undergird um, and give definition to our practice. And again, I just want to quickly highlight uh, for us um, a, a story. This is an account with um, the Lord Jesus and with Peter. 
And um, Peter, Johnny mentioned this the other day, Peter um, gets to a moment and he's talking about another disciple. He's talking about John and he says to the Lord about um, his friend, if I could put it like that. Um, what about this man? What about him? What's going to happen there? What's going on? What about him? Um, and the Lord Jesus speaks into his life in that moment. And he just says to him, as for, as for you, you follow me. And he brings it back instantly into this profound relationship of the man, in that case, Peter, um, and his Lord, the Lord Jesus. And he says, the priority for you in this moment is not to think about what's going on over there with that fella, but for you, you follow me. You prioritize your relationship with me and you follow you follow, you follow. There's a lot of safety um, in that. Why? Because the Lord Jesus calls us into all of our Christian lives. He continues to call us into relationship with himself, a growing, deepening awareness and relationship with himself. And so he calls and he calls us in this way. And he says, you um, follow me. And that's why um, I reference this thought. Or as we look forward and we look to continue we are thinking about a relationship and not a roadmap. If somebody just hands you a roadmap, you can read it and kind of go off on your own. But God calls us into a far more profound thing than that. He is the roadmap. He calls us into relationship with himself. And we find our security and direction as we walk with him. We follow him. We go with him. Um, so that's the first thing. It's a principle. And there must be a lot of outworking of that into practice in our lives. But that is an undergirding principle. And I want to celebrate it. I really want to celebrate it for us. I want to hold it up. And it's like, guys, just remember this. Focus in here. And the way that you lead your lives in the things that you do with your time, in the focus of your energies. Um, it is this thought, follow me. Follow me into this situation follow me into that relationship but follow me follow me follow me follow me relationship not roadmap so um when we think about practice i want to highlight some things for us unsurprisingly i guess um from the book of acts um and so we're going to go there um for a minute just right to the beginning of acts acts chapters one and two and I just want to draw some things out for us um, from Acts chapters one and two. And again, in this, we're thinking about practice and we're going to get on to some even more practical expressions of practice. But these things here we find at the beginning of the book of Acts. And as you read and you can I might just read these verses for us. This is Acts um, chapter one. And in Acts chapter one, um, verse eight says this the lord jesus says this but you will receive power but well, let's go back further actually this is chris read from this last week and it said he, he said to them it's not for you to know times or epochs seasons which the father has fixed by his own authority but you will receive power when the holy spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the remotest parts of the earth and so that's Acts right at the beginning of Acts chapter one and we could highlight it title it in this way the promise of the spirit that's what the Lord Jesus just spoke then the promise of the spirit there was this expectation um this looking forward to the promise of the spirit and then we get into Acts chapter two um, and I'll just read verse four. And it says, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. So this is the fulfillment of promise. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance. And uh, you can read down these passages and I encourage you to do it. But I just want to pull out these verses for us. And so Acts chapter one, the promise of the Spirit. Acts chapter two the coming of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Um, and then further down towards the end of Acts chapter 2, um, we read these verses, and I'm going to read from verse 42 down to the end. 
And so it says this. So there's been the promise of the spirit. There has been the coming of the spirit. And then it says, and they, the people of God, they were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayers. And everyone kept feeling a sense of awe. And many wonders and signs were taking place through the apostles. And all those who had believed were together and had all things in common. And they began selling their property and possessions and were sharing them all as anyone might have need, day by day, continuing with one mind in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. They were taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord was adding to their number day by day those who were being saved. And so what we could say there and the end of Acts chapter two is there is this outworking of Holy Spirit. So we've seen the promise of the Spirit, we've seen the coming of the Spirit, and then we see the outworking of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the life of God, begins to outwork through the people of God, and it takes on certain form and expression. And we could say this for the first time, that in these moments, the church is born. Up until this point, the church has been anticipated, looked forward to. But in this, in these moments, what's happening is that the church is born. And it's a beautiful thing. And uh, the church, so the church is born. And then we can say that the church is the continuation of the incarnation. I'm actually quoting Les, who said that recently, but it's helpful. I think the church is the continuation of the incarnation. What do we mean by that? That simply that the church of Jesus Christ, um, the people of God, that God, that the Lord Jesus, by the Spirit, continues to outwork. He continues to be incarnated, if I can put it like that. Um, in his church, the expression of Jesus Christ through his people, his church. The church is the continuation of the incarnation. And the book of Acts is the outworking of the life of the spirit. I want to do this for us this morning. We're getting on to some other stuff. but I want to give us all of this as backdrop and as context um, for other things that we um, will think about. But the book of Acts is the outworking of the life of the Spirit. So when we look at the book of Acts and we think about the church and how she began and what happened, and we can identify um, certain things, but we are not looking for a carbon copy. We're not looking to copy the text, the book of Acts, if I can put it like that. We're not looking um, for... Um, things to copy in that sense, but uh, we are needing the same source, the same life, the same Holy Spirit, the same reality of God, because it is from that life that all this expression, all this outworking, all this incarnation happened. It happened um, not because um, they had a blueprint, but because they had the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Spirit of God. And so they found that as the Spirit of God was working in them, that life worked out of them and it took on certain form and shape. Um, and so it is the life that we are hungry for. It is the ongoing um, refreshing and filling of the Holy Spirit in our lives, which enables us to function, that gives us practice. We're not looking for a carbon copy, but we are continuing to need the same source. We find this life of the Spirit, this life of the Spirit, and begins to express as we look in the book of Acts and we look at um, what happened for them, 
we find that the life of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, begins to express in the people of God, begins to work out in the people of God, and it takes on certain expression, um, certain practice, if I can say that. And so um, there's four things that are particularly highlighted. I'm going to briefly highlight them um, again for us. Um, but as we think about the church being the continuation of the incarnation, we see the um, practice of that in four key ways. Um, and these are things that we've always celebrated and we will continue um, to do so. But we find four key things in that last passage that I read that, that began to be expressed and that people, people continued to hold. And the first thing um, was the apostles' doctrine. Um, was the teaching, if we can put it like this for us now, is the scripture, the, um, the Bible, the apostles' doctrine, the teaching. And one of the things which will is true for us now and will continue to be true, um, and I think even more stark, is that to continue um, to be faithful to the apostles' doctrine, to be faithful um, to the Bible, to the word of God, um, will be increasingly challenging in this country. I wonder if you recognize that. I think it's an obvious thing to say, um, but it will continue to be uh, challenging and possibly more so as we move forward. But um, out of the expression of the Holy Spirit, the people um, continued in the apostles' doctrine and the teaching. And maybe that was in larger groups at times um, where the apostles were bringing teaching. Um, and another thing that they moved on that they found as an expression of their life in God was what's referred to as fellowship. So they had the apostles doctrine. Um, they had fellowship. Um, and again, these are all um, expressions of the Holy Spirit of the life of God. Um, and so they were finding this element of their life together. And so we could say there was within that, um, that part of that word's interesting this to do with fellowship is actually to do with social engagement. They were actually in one another's lives. They got, they knew one another in the course of their ordinary everyday lives. They, um, they were in one another's homes. Um, there was this, this fellowship, this partnering together. There was this familial care one another in that context of fellowship there was sharing what one another had um we're not going to make a doctrine out of um the people um went and sold lands and laid the money at the apostles uh, at the apostles feet we're not going to make a doctrine out of that as we see it in the book of acts um, but what we see there is generosity is sharing together, sharing their lives together, sharing their resources together, being in and out of one another's homes and one another's lives. That was and continues to be an expression of the Holy Spirit in God's people. Um, so uh, the teaching, um, the fellowship, the breaking of bread. So they were regularly, consistently um, breaking bread together, the bread and wine, um, and we could put it like this, um, that in the image of that um, practice, which was definitely um, going on amongst them as often, um, you know, consistently and regularly, is that there is this ongoing need and principle for consistently feeding on Christ in our lives. Um, and so we find that as an expression of the Holy Spirit. The fourth thing that we find there as an expression of this life is what's referred to as prayers. It's not just a singular word prayer, it is this word prayers. We've talked quite a bit about this over recent um, months and I just again I just want to hold it up for us before we move on to some other things. But um, prayers within this um, practice of the early church this expression of the Holy Spirit amongst God's people, there is this prayers. And this is like a big, broad word, and it incorporates all kinds of things. And one of the things which we find in this word prayers is this thought of rapturous praise. Rapturous praise. And I, again, I want to hold it up for us because I want to encourage us in this 
that part of the expression of the life of God and the practice of the people of God by the Spirit of God is that there will be rapturous praise amongst God's people. And as there is that kind of praise rising to God, there is this connection with prayer, with prayer life. So it's helpful to um, consider that. I think there is um, in this um, prayers, there is celebration, there is quiet waiting, there is intercession, there is um, speaking in tongues, unknown languages, there is petition, there is a whole host of things which we find in this word prayers. And I just want to put it like this, that that is the outworking of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And so it's identified in these um, particular ways, um, these four things, and these things um, may vary in how they are expressed, and we see that across the world in different places, in different countries, in different cultures, we see these things vary in how they are expressed, but they are always part of healthy church life. The apostles doctrine fellowship the breaking of bread and prayer so these things we love them and we hold them and um, as we move forward as a local church and um, we will continue to take these things with us as we move forward they will continue to be um, part of the expression of the holy spirit in our lives both individually and corporately um, but it may be that in this next season, we might need to simplify our expression. And I'm actually really um, encouraged, excited um, about this. Um, we're not static. We don't stay in one place. We're not trying to build traditions, but we are wanting to continue to follow the Lord Jesus. And um, we have been compelled by lockdown if I can say this, um, to reconsider, or maybe because of this, we have been reconsidering, reconsidering our approach as a church, and what was normal in the past may need to change going forward. I'd say it already has done. Um, so change um, is happening. It has happened. Um, and before lockdown, um, in the way that we functioned and did things, there became a lot of focus and energy going into achieving an event on a Sunday morning um, and a lot of uh, people's resources and energy and activity um, went into that and it was good and we will continue so don't get worried we will continue to um, have those moments on a Sunday morning um, but things have changed expression has changed um, there are in terms of people less resources less um, ability to do things in the same way and we don't need to do things in the same way and so what I want to say for us before I move on to some of these other things is I want to really encourage us as we find that we're moving on um, with the Lord Jesus and into this next season where hopefully we're coming out more and more of out of lockdown um, restrictions hopefully will get less and less there'll be more and more opportunity to be able to be together in person um, I just really want to encourage us collectively to be thinking about that to be thinking around that to be having conversations around that and there'll be opportunity um, for this um, so what I'm not wanting to do is just to try and kind of dictate or write things in stone but to invite conversation, to invite a sharing of hearts and of thoughts, um, and that we can share those things together and move forward together. Um, but it does seem to me that necessarily um, we will need to simplify as a church. Um, so thinking about um, Sundays particularly, but there's more to it than this, but there might need to be um, less instruments, but more adoration. I wonder what that does for you when I make that comment. It excites me, if I'm honest. 
There might be less instruments. We might be even less slick, if that is possible, than we have ever been, excuse me, Pete. Um, we might be, um, and there might be less um, ability in that way, but imagine with less instruments, with um, less um, uh, breadth even maybe, but how about more adoration? Maybe we could use the simple that we have um, to move, to express our love and our adoration of God in an even greater and more profound way. I really think that we could and, um, and that we will do. In fact, uh, we may well find, and again, all of these things that I'm gonna mention, they're kind of suggestions because I do really want us to be talking about it together and sharing our hearts and thoughts together. Um, but just as we look at the practicalities, we might find that there's less um, um, kids ministry on a Sunday. So uh, the level that that got to for us in terms of the amount of groups, the amount of um, adults involved in serving those groups, we won't be able to do in the same way anymore. So that may look different. Um, but imagine even though there may need to be less kids ministry in the way that we have known it, um, there will be opportunity for more family time together in the context of the church and of worship. I was really encouraged just with the worship evening that we just had, and we deliberately did it at a time which was more accessible to kids, and so families could come all together. Um, and it was a beautiful time. And I would say, um, this is not a good way of putting it, but it worked really well. And the children were a part of that um, that moment, that context, that worshipping God together as families. It's a beautiful thing um, when children see their parents adoring God. Um, so there might be more of that going on, which I think is, again, uh, a beautiful thing and honouring to God. We will continue to preach the word um, and hopefully grow in that. We might need to learn to be more concise. <laughs> I might need to learn to be more concise and possibly other people do. Um, but to do things in a different way, we might need to learn to be more concise. There's all sorts of other things that we do um, as a church. Some of them are on a Sunday. Some of them are at other times. Um, we can think about, um, we would regularly have church lunches together. I want to make this point for us and thinking about fellowship. Um, we might just simply need to take a more simple approach to that. But actually, that will facilitate us being able to do that more frequently. Um, so as part of our gathering, um, we might be able to eat together more. But instead of um, a few people um, providing a hot meal for a lot of people, we could just all bring a packed lunch. What do you reckon? <laughs> We can just simplify. We can just come simply with what we have and prioritise the important. Um, and that is fellowship. That is being together, knowing one another, growing um, together, a more simple approach. And one of the things that I'm hungry for and I see happening within that context of fellowship and eating together and being together in that way and more frequently um, is that within that context, you know, I'm really challenged about this. There are real, if I could put it like this, ministry opportunities for all of us. As we know one another, as we talk to one another, as we learn what's going on in one another's lives, there is opportunity to minister to one another, to serve one another, to pray for one another within that very ordinary, very natural, familial context of eating together and being together. And um, we can, in that setting, in that context, minister to one another. Um, there's plenty of uh, countries around the world um, where the church finds that reality. And it's a beautiful thing. And we can know it together. Um, we will continue um, with small groups. Um, again, recognising the importance of small groups. We are just generally a smaller group at this point, um, but the, um, the, the positive of small groups um, is that you're much more easily aware of other people's needs because you know them better. 
I really want to continue to hold this up for us because sometimes we can get an idea of church and we can think actually church is about going somewhere on a Sunday where I'm going to sing some songs, I'm going to listen to a message and then I'm going to go home to my life. And it's like, no, that's a part of what happens. But we must consider, maybe even for some of us reconsider, um, that there is a spiritual outworking, a dynamic of the Holy Spirit, which includes this kind of fellowshipping together. It actually, uh, we don't all like this word necessarily, but it encourages an openness with my life. It encourages a vulnerability in my life. You will know um, there might be some strengths and you will get to know better some of the weaknesses, but that's okay in a context of love, the love of God together as the people of God. And there is a reality that comes from being willing to walk together, to love one another in that way, to have that time together, to eat together, to be a part of one another's lives. And one of the benefits that comes out of that kind of spiritual interaction and fellowship is actually it enriches other things. It enriches um, prayer life of the church because we are closer we are there is a greater level of understanding and togetherness so in small groups there's an awareness of need there is also um, accessible pastoral care and I want to hold this up for us as well because um, pastoral care is something obviously that can happen from particular individuals and needs to, but it's also pastoral care is also part of active church life. It's part of community life. And we find um, easy access to that support and encouragement within small groups. We find in small groups, again, because of an easy awareness of other people's needs and their lives, we find um, that there is a generosity. There can be an easy giving to one another of the things of need. You have become aware of need as you know each other, as you know people, and you can give um, to that need. So there is a fellowship there. There is a generosity there. Um, I'm just going to keep moving and um, I'm going to finish quite soon. But all of these practical things are just kind of throwing them out there really for us this morning so that we can think about them. We can pray about them. We can be exercised about them and think, God, what does this mean for me in my life, in my church life, in my connecting with my brothers and my sisters and my expression of the Holy Spirit in my life? What does this mean for me? And it's a personal challenge as much as it is a corporate challenge. Um, as we move forward, I want to highlight these other things, different things for us now, because um, I know that um, they're now things and they're things that people are thinking about and quite rightly. Um, but we know that for this last year, um, strictly speaking, we have not had a plurality of eldership in the church. We believe in a plurality of eldership. We believe in more than one elder, um, but you've just had me <laughs> for a year. And uh, so I just want to highlight the point is we're not going to stay in that place. Um, other people have um, served not in eldership, but in really helpful ways to um, support and facilitate the activity um, of the church. Um, but we will be looking at this. So I just want people to know that we will be looking at this. And again, we will be sharing our hearts and our thoughts on this subject of eldership um, and others being part of that eldership um, together. So I just want to highlight that for us. There's other things to do with this, um, this, this group, this network, Mission Life Grace, and people have mentioned it a number of times. And um, just kind of, again, that there will be, there needs to be an ongoing conversation and openness about kind of what is this, what isn't it, what would it mean for us, is this a direction we're taking or isn't it? It's kind of like this is a church thing um, for us to talk about and consider um, together. So I just want to highlight the fact that there will be opportunities for conversation, um, for feedback, um, on those two things, but these other practical areas of church life and kind of thinking about what becomes 
our new normal. There's a lot of people have used this phrase, haven't they? And they've talked about the new normal and what does that look like? And so this, um, these things that I'm laying out for us this morning are really just a beginning, a first step towards our collective understanding of what that will look for, like for us as we move forward. And it will look a bit different um, to the way that we met before lockdown. Um, so there'll be lots of opportunity and I just really want to encourage us um, to take that opportunity even today as we get together for a picnic um, a bit later. Um, there's opportunity there to be together, to talk together, to share together on all of these things and I encourage us to take it. Um, when we have our prayer time tomorrow we will use it to pray <laughs> together about these things and to focus um, on these things in our connect groups this week let's explore these things together let's again share our hearts our thoughts together as a church um, and to come have conversation to have feedback um, to share any any thoughts whether they're concerns whether they are um, kind of really uh, in, encouragements um, but around these things because again we want to move forward together, um, which is why I'm doing this um, this morning. There is a feast prepared. I'm going to go really briefly back to where I started. There is a feast prepared. We can take that image in different ways, but I'm using it in this way this morning. There is a feast prepared and the Lord would send us out into highways and byways and to compel others to come in. And what I want to do just very really quick is just to highlight that all of these other things that I've talked about this morning in terms of the way the church was birthed in the beginning, the expressions of Holy Spirit life that came out of that, what that may look like for us as our expression of Holy Spirit life going forward. There is a distinct connection between that expression of life and God wanting to add other people into his church and his kingdom and that's this church but I'm not just speaking about our church um, but the church and I think that some of the ways that we can go about doing things moving forward could be a even more accessible place to other people who don't know the Lord Jesus and that we can invite people in when we are doing things which are just ordinary parts of our lives in in eating together in being together in worshiping together that there will be an invitation for others to come into that context and it will be more accessible perhaps um, than it ever has been so here we go our relationship with God our relationship with each other and our relationship with those who don't yet know God all of these things they go together as a complete um, package and really quickly, um, really just to provoke conversation, um, I kind of touch down on each of those things. And it's like, we're gonna move forward. Um, we are going to continue um, and go, take great confidence from the Lord in doing that. And I just really wanna encourage us to together explore what that's going to look like because it's changing. But I think that is a really good um, and a positive thing. So I hope all that makes sense. Um, I'm not being too long. Um, Pete, I'm going to come back to you in a minute for a song if you've got your guitar on your lap. Um, and a bit later, we are going to be um, eating together, having a picnic um, and just chatting together. Let me pray for us. Lord, I really want to thank you that you are an unsurprised God. You are not surprised by things that happen and the things that we walk through. And so our confidence is in you. We thank you that you have been faithful to us and you have been speaking to us and you will continue to be faithful to us and you will continue to speak to us and 
in all of these thoughts and things that we're trying to share out together this morning, our hearts are to go with you, to follow you in all of our practice, in all of our expression and outworking of your life. We want to go with you, to go with you into the increasing of your kingdom and of your glory. And that men and women, because of the way that we choose to go with you and follow you, will find that they can find an introduction to yourself. They can come and they can know you and can be in community with you. We love you, Lord. We thank you that you are a faithful God. And just in this moment, we, in a sense, put a marker in the ground. We raise again an Ebenezer, knowing that you have been faithful to us to this point. And we look forward to your ongoing faithfulness in our lives. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pete.